The Swiss financial newspaper Finanz und Wirtschaft published an interesting article about 2016. They said that the value strategy was the best strategy last year. The value strategy advises to invest in companies that are relatively cheap compared to their size. The investment guru Benjamin Graham already postulated to use the value strategy in 1949. Warren Buffett made a lot of money using the value strategy and Robert Schiller even received a Nobel Prize for proving that the value strategy works. The value strategy is also very important at Obermott. As a matter of fact, when you look at our top 10 companies, top 10 lists in 2016, the value strategy had the best performance, 8.6% better than the comparable in the indices. The safety strategy and the growth strategy were both better than zero, so they were still better than the indices, but only marginally better. And also the combined strategy uh, just returned an alpha of 3%. So it was just 3% better than the indices themselves. Now, the big question is though, does the value strategy work on the level of markets as well? We can actually analyze this very well because for years we analyzed the value in entire markets, just as Finanz und Wirtschaft published. And what we actually had as a result and what is published on our website is that, um, um, that the value markets are Tokyo, Korea, Taiwan, Russia, there's also, there are also European value markets like France and Italy and Portugal and even uh, Helsinki, you know, even Finland is a value market right now. So there are interesting markets that have very low value. But first of all, is that a, is that a reason to invest in these markets? Well, we also plotted the combined rank, the combined strategy here, and we can see that not all of the markets have a good combined rank. So if you look at Tokyo, Korea or Taiwan, the only you know, market with really a good combined rank is Russia again. Now, this is one problem. Not just look, don't just look at the value strategy, look also at the other strategies to invest when you invest. But the bigger problem is actually something else. For years, we've been correlating market value and also you know, growth and safety strategy against future returns, which means we measured if the markets with a good value have a higher return in the future. And the result is actually quite sobering. What you can see here is the correlation between the market value in one year and the subsequent, subsequent absolute performance. What you can see on the horizontal axis here is the market value. You know, markets with a good value are above here, you know, 70, 80, you know, percentile rank. These are markets with good value and the market with bad ranks are on the left side. And we plotted the absolute performance of the following year. And what, what you can see here on the left uh, vertical axis is the performance from zero to 100% means 100% means outperforming all other markets. And the result what we see here from this correlation analysis is that market value has no predicting power to absolute returns in the subsequent year. In other words, if you invest in a market with a high value, it doesn't mean you get a higher return in the future. And that's actually sobering because it means that Finanz und Wirtschaft should not recommend investing in Russia as they do with the snowy picture of Russia. What they should do, they can still do the analysis, but on a level of the market itself, analyzing the value doesn't make any sense. It makes sense on the company level, but not on the market level. And for you as an investor, this is really good news because it means you don't have to worry about it. You can just go about using the overmarked ranks for each individual stock and you get the right decision. I wish you good luck with your own investing.